Alex Hundert was arrested at gunpoint in the early morning of June 26, 2010. He was criminalized as a G20 conspirator before the G20 even happened. Hundert, an anarchist like Sacco and Vanzetti, spent four weeks in jail. His release was contingent on a hundred grand bail and is not participating in demonstrations. The Crown challenged Hundert's release, but the court ruled that Alex could remain free on bail. On September 17th, the police arrested Hundert for speaking on a Ryerson University panel analyzing the G20 police action. A hanging judge then ruled that Hundert had breached his no demonstrations bail condition by speaking on this panel. While in custody, Hundert was presented with even more draconian conditions for bail. He refused to sign these, although he was threatened with solitary confinement and denied access to counsel. After two days in custody, he signed the bail conditions, coerced by means unknown. If this had happened in Iran or China, the Western media would have blown a gasket over blatant police disregard for the rule of law. But few outside the Canadian activist community know anything about Alex Hundert other than his splashy arrest in the first light of the G20. The vast majority of the 900 G20 detainees have had all charges dropped against them. But Alex Hundert is the sacrificial lamb of the Miami model of dealing with dissent. By criminalizing him as a dangerous subversive, our nascent police state justifies the massive cost and brutality of its machinery of oppression. Last month, the FBI started raiding the homes and offices of numerous anti-war and pro-Palestinian activists. Ostensibly, they were looking for evidence of material support for terrorism. But in reality, these are the Palmer raids of our time, a concerted effort to stifle any democratic dissent by criminalizing it by association with terrorism. Meanwhile, Police Constable Adam Josephs, affectionately known as Officer Bubbles for his G20 heroics in the face of a soap solution orb onslaught, got loads of airtime for suing YouTube and 25 people who posted thereupon. One of the John Doe's in the suit on the hook for 1.2 million has identified himself as Todd Mara of Hamilton. Todd faces financial ruin for posting, Officer Bubbles probably looks at himself in the mirror a lot. This was among the devastatingly defamatory posts implying that Josephs engages in cruel and draconian conduct comparable to the Nazis under Adolf Hitler. So in Canada today, you can imprison and gag an activist, but hurt a cop's feelings online, and you better lawyer up. Ironic that this year's Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to Liu Xiaobo for his long and nonviolent struggle for fundamental human rights in China. In reality, Liu Xiaobo was engaged in pretty much the same kind of activity as Alex Hunter. So let's all rise up in the hope that one day Alex Hunter too is recognized for his resistance to being silenced in the struggle for human rights. And let's ramp up the satire to ensure that Officer Bubbles' infamy consigns him forever to a desk job. In Toronto, I'm Humberto da Silva. Not Rex Murphy.